Okay, we continue our tissue lecture with fun facts about the nervous system or nervous tissue. So the nervous system is the body's inner communication system. It's made of the body's many nerve cells. The nerve cells take in information through the body's senses, touch, taste, smell, sight, and sound. The brain interprets these sensory cues to understand what's going on outside and inside the body and it allows the person to use their body to interact with their surrounding environment. Now the body has billions and billions of nerve cells. Every body's or every person's body contains billions of nerve cells, neurons. There are about 100 billion in the brain and 13.5 million in the spinal cord. The body's neurons take up and send out electric and chemical signals to other neurons. Now research has mostly said that once you lose neurons you can't really bring them back so once you lose it that's it so you have a finite number of nerve cells new research shows that there you the human body may be capable of making certain nerve cells regenerate but again the research is very limited and still new um, but for the most part once you lose a nerve cell unfortunately you cannot get that back uh, neurons are made up of three parts. Neurons receive signals in short antenna-like parts called dendrites and send signals to other neurons with a long cable-like part called the axon. And we'll uh, dive into this a little bit more during uh, um, neuro, the nervous system, but this is just a good introduction. Uh, in some neurons, axons are covered with a thin layer of a fat called myelin, which acts as an insulator. The more myelin, the faster the conduction. It helps transmit nerve signals, impulses down a long axon. And the main part of a neuron is called the cell body. It contains all the important parts of the cell that allow it to function properly. So here's the nervous tissue. All right, like I was mentioning, here's the axon. Here's the little dendrites, and here's the cell body, the neurosoma. So neuroglia, or glial cells, support the neurons. And we'll talk about the difference between glial cells a little bit later when we do the nervous system. Then you have neurons, which transmit information. The parts of the cell are the neurosoma, the dendrites, and the axon. Here's the neuron again, another picture. The cell body of a neuron, also called the soma or the neurosoma, contains the nucleus and the mitochondria. The dendrites transfer the nerve impulse to the soma, and the axon carries the axon potential away to another excitable cell. And we'll talk about neurotransmitters, epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, all that in the nervous system. Nervous tissue is made up of neurons and neuroglial. The cells of the nervous tissue are specialized to transmit and receive impulses. Now we talk briefly about muscle. Again, we'll go in depth with uh, nervous tissue and muscle tissue uh, in the next few chapters. Adults, guess what, have a certain number of muscle cells. So you have a finite number of muscle cells. Though exercise, such as weightlifting, the cells enlarge but usually the overall number of cells itself does not increase. Uh, skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles because we have control over their contraction. Our brains control skeletal muscle movement. However, reflex reactions of skeletal muscles are the exception. So those are like a patellar reflex, the Achilles reflex. These are involuntary reactions to external stimuli. What happens is your body senses a quick stretch and a protective mechanism it'll contract so that it doesn't do damage. So it's a protective mechanism. Uh, visceral muscles are involuntary muscle because for the most part they are not consciously controlled and smooth and cardiac muscles are under the control of the peripheral nervous system. There's different types, three different types of muscle tissue. Again, skeletal, they, they have muscle fibers, they have striations, they're voluntary. Cardiac has cardiomyocytes, they have striations. The key feature is intercalated disc, they're involuntary. And smooth muscle, they have fusiform myocytes, they're non-striated, and they're involuntary. So knowing these characteristics and being able to choose them on multiple choices is really good. But they're all part of the one umbrella of muscular tissue. So A is skeletal tissue. Cells have prominent striations. B, smooth muscles have a single nucleus and no real visible striations. 
and the cardiac muscles appear striated and have a single nucleus. So make sure you know the difference and able to recognize skeletal versus smooth versus cardiac. Probably would use maybe these models right here, but you should be able to, once you understand the concept, you should, it doesn't matter whether it's this or another slide, you should be able to recognize it. So again, here's another image of the skeletal muscle. Now this guy, he injected uh, oil into his muscles to get uh, real big. This is just too much, right? People are just dumb, crazy, right? I showed you this picture before, I think. But this guy, he injected uh, oil into it and he actually died from it because he went into septic shock. So this was in Brazil. Dumb, dumb. Here's cardiac uh, muscle, right? The key is the intercalated discs. Here's smooth muscle, no striations. See the nuclei? Now you have tissue membranes as well. So you have a mucous membrane, serous membrane, cutaneous membrane, and synovial membranes. So the two broad categories of tissue membranes in the body are connective tissue membranes, which includes synovial membranes, and epithelial membranes, which include mucous membranes, serous membranes, and the cutaneous membrane. In other words, skin. So mucous membranes line the digestive, respiratory, urinary, reproductive tracts. They are coated with secretions of mucous glands. Serous membranes line body cavities such as exterior body, the peritoneal, pleural, and pericardial cavities. Cutaneous membranes, or the skin, covers the body surface. And synovial membranes line the body cavities and produce the fluid within the joint. You also have these glands, which are the exocrine and the endocrine glands. And we'll talk about exocrine versus endocrine when we do, obviously, the endocrine uh, system um, and how they work and how they function. Uh, you have other glands. The endocrine glands secrete hormones into the blood. Okay, so that's the function of the endocrine gland. They secrete hormones. An exocrine gland uses the duct to secrete to the body surface or the cavity. Okay, So that's the difference between an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. Now the pancreas, which is interesting, uh, acts like an endocrine and an exocrine gland. So the pancreas is unique in that uh, aspect. Here's the exocrine gland. Again, we'll talk more about these a little bit later when we talk about, uh, we'll talk about sweat glands when we do the skin memory glands when we do the reproductive and the pancreas when we do the digestive. So at least you understand what these are. Uh, types of exocrine secretions. You have serous glands which secrete thin watery fluids. You have mucous glands that secrete mucin that absorbs water to form mucus. And then you have mixed glands that secrete a mix of watery and mucus secretions. Methods of exocrine. So how do they take it out? You have uh, the eccrine or the American glands, exocytosis, you have these tear glands, pancreas, gastric glands. You have apocrine glands, which are droplet buds from the surface, so your mammary and axillary glands are like that. And then you have holocrine glands, which is the entire cell, so that's oil producing glands from the scalp and eyelid. So you see these secretions that come out of you, well these are these uh, glands that produce that. Okay, so that's why axillary glands, they sometimes have a foul odor as well, mammary as well, they can have that foul odor because they mix with that bacteria. Uh, again, modes of glandular excretion. In the American secretion, the cell remains intact. In the African secretion, the apical portion of the cell is released as well. Okay, and then the holocrine secretion, the cell is destroyed as it releases its product and the cell itself become part of the secretion. So those are the different ways that they secrete. Okay, So the American gland stays intact. Apricin, part of it comes off and then the holocrine, the cell is destroyed. Uh, again, the membranes, cutaneous is the largest membrane of the skin. You've got the mucous membranes, epithelial. And you've got serous me uh, membranes, which is simple squamous and produces a serous fluid. Here are the serous membranes. Okay, This is just FYI. You don't really need to uh, memorize this diagram per se. 
tissue growth and develop? Now that you understand the tissues, well, how do they develop? Well, you get growth, hyperplasia, which means cell multiplication. You get hypertrophy, which is enlargement of the cells. That's muscular. And then neoplasia, unfortunately, that's tumor development. We don't like neoplasia. Hypertrophy we like. Hyperplasia is okay, depending on where. Uh, changes, differentiation, specialization, or form. Remember we talked about embryonic stem cells. Uh, we like those kind of changes and differentiation. Um, and then there's metaplasia, which can change from one tissue type to another. You need to repair this tissue, and mitosis is a great way to repair. Uh, regeneration is replacement of dead cells. Fibrosis, you get scar tissue that develops. And then also you get death, shrinkage and death. You get atrophy, which is a reduction in size of number. Necrosis, unfortunately, that's pathological death of tissue. Uh, How does that occur? That's infarction. So a myocardial infarction would be a heart attack. So you get uh, blood supply that's cut off to the heart. And then you get gangrene sometimes in the, in the legs or people that are diabetic. They have an insufficient blood supply. And then we talked a little bit about apoptosis. I showed you the the image uh, program cell death between the fingers. All right. Did you know that right-handed people live on average nine years longer than left-handed people? And it really is just because this doesn't have a genetic basis, but it's largely due to the fact that the majority of machines and tools we use on a daily basis are designed for those that are right-handed. So more accidents. So dangerous for life because resulting of thousands of accidents. And then women burn fat more slowly than men by a rate of about 50 calories a day. So most men have a much easier time burning fat than women. Women, because of the reproductive role, unfortunately, generally require a higher basic body fat proportion than men. So they are the body is less likely to lose that fat, and women have a little bit more difficult time. So it is genetic. There are some a lot of factors besides diet and exercise that goes into weight loss. The goblet cells. We'll talk about when we do the respiratory, but then they're in the lining of the cell, small intestine, columnar. They can be found in pseudostratified in the respiratory tract. And the arrows in this micrograph point to the mucus secreting goblet cells. Okay. And we like mucus because it protects the stomach, it protects the uh, small intestine from the dangerous high levels of hydrochloric acid that the stomach also has. But mucus also protects the linings. Then we'll talk about sebaceous glands in the next chapter. These glands secrete oils that lubricate and protect the skin. They are holocrine glands and they are destroyed after releasing their contents. And then tissue healing, how does it occur? Uh, we'll talk about this more in the immune system. But clotting occurs caused by clotting proteins and plasma proteins and the scab is formed. Remember we talked about the difference between swelling and inflammatory. Body needs inflammation to heal. It doesn't need swelling. And if you have swelling, excess swelling, that's because the lymphatic system isn't doing its job. So white blood cells seep into the injured area. Then you have granulation tissue restores the vascular supply and the underlying area of scar tissue. Now remember, you probably remember when you had an injury when you were a child and you scar worse when you were a child because your body is so uh, uh, wanting to heal quickly. And as you get older, unfortunately, you heal slower but you scar less. So, and then we'll definitely talk about the development of cancer, which is change in cell size, nucleoside, and organization in tissue. Okay, so cell division takes place to replace lost tissue. Cell division accelerates, and then the carcinoma breaks into the underlying tissue and then invades the tissue. So we'll talk uh, definitely more in depth. This is just an introduction uh, to that, but I'll go really in depth into uh, cancer and the different types. All right, good job.